In this lesson, we're going to learn about continuously rasterize and collapse transformation, what they are, how they work, and how you can use them to your benefit. Okay, so we talked just a little bit earlier about what continuously rasterize was. So let's do that again, just to kind of reinforce. We're gonna, this time we're gonna do it for our plane. Now we did it for our plane earlier because we had the plane still there, but then we cut it out of our composition and brought it in anew. And because we brought it in from our project panel, it didn't maintain any kind of switches or effects that it had before. So if we come over here and toggle our switches and modes so that we can see our switches. We know from that earlier lesson that continuously rasterize is located right here. So I'm going to click that and you see the plane just kind of snaps into focus a little bit better. You can see it a lot better if I'm at 100% and I toggle that on and off. You can see how that gets a lot more clear. So what is happening is Anything that you make that is a vector file is created with points and curves. And those points and curves use math to figure out what the smoothest line is that they can make. Now, whenever you're working with pixels, that's it. You've got a certain amount of pixels. And if you try to scale them up, those pixels are going to start to look alias like what we have here. So by turning this to continuously rasterize, we're saying don't treat this as pixels anymore. We want you to treat it as a vector so that if our camera zoomed in or if we scaled it up as an animation, we wouldn't get any kind of pixelization. And then also you can do it just if you're going to have an image that the scale isn't animated, you just have it smaller from when you brought it in, you want to make sure that that's turned on for vector layers. Now, we also have something called collapse transformations, and that is actually the same switch. So if I hover over that switch, you can see that it says for comp layer, it's called collapse transformations. For a vector layer, it's called continuously rasterize. And the difference is that for a composition, when you turn this on, you get a lot of the same effect. But in this scenario, whenever you do it for a composition, it's saying look inside of the composition for the data that you need there. So in our composition, we already turned on our continuously rasterized switches for the different layers, not different comps, these are layers. So if we go back out to the main transportation composition and we turn on continuously rasterize for the map layer, that's going to snap into place. Now, one thing that I want you to notice is if we go back into the map comp and we turn off continuously rasterize for the layers, we come back out to the main transportation composition, it's blurry again. And that is because we are telling it by turning on that collapse transformations for the comp, we want it to look inside of this, this comp layer and we don't have continuously rasterized turned on for any of those layers inside of it, so it's still treating it as pixels. So every time you drill down within a comp layer, like this one, you are going to need to turn on continuously rasterize for vector layers if you want them to be clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. We'll come back out to our main transportation comp. And you can see now this is a lot prettier to look at and it's a lot easier to read as well. So definitely if you're going to make something like this map and you know you're going to change it, consider making it in a vector based program like Illustrator because you're going to get a lot better results once you start scaling up or down inside of After Effects or anywhere else that you might need to change the size of what you've made. Now, why does this happen in the first place? Why doesn't After Effects just automatically say, hey, you made a vector file, you brought in a vector file, I'm gonna make it look clear, um, because it seems like that might be easier to deal with and not having to worry about all these different switches. Um, so let's talk for a second about why that happens. So. Whenever you have a um, still layer, 
let's just talk about layers for a second, not collapse transformations. Um, After Effects is automatically going to recognize it as pixels. And in some cases, this will be what you want because certain effects don't actually work whenever you have collapse or excuse me continuously rasterize checked on so because of that issue um, you have the ability to turn it on or off there's also another reason later on when we start learning about 3d when you're working with continuously or excuse me collapse transformations you might not actually want to have it give you all of the data. When you start working with 3D, you can start playing around with actually having 3D layers that are spread out in space um, that you can flatten and move around as one image. Um, and it starts to get a little more technical probably than what you're ready for at this point in the quick starts. But having the ability to change that is helpful. Now, another reason um, and really the root reason why this happens is because after effects has what you call an order of operations so it calculates things in different orders it can't calculate everything that you've changed at once so if i drop this down uh for this layer here um it has transformation um first this is what we see here um, and then it's got these properties so it's going to start to uh, recognize these in kind of a top-down way and scale you can see is a little bit further down and also um, if we let's say we add a mask let's just do this for the sake of the demonstration here I'm gonna grab my pen tool just really quickly make a little mask um, you don't have to do that I'm just showing you masks appears above transform so the mask is going to be calculated before any kind of transformation so because of that whenever you click this continuously rasterize switch it's going to basically bump up that scale to the front of the operations and then you get a nice crisp image so um hopefully that makes you be able to understand that a little bit better it has to do with the order of operations and that's why it gets blurry is because it's trying to calculate everything but it hasn't been told what to calculate in what order it's just defaulting to what it's used to and because of that you get a blurry image even if it's a vector unless you have checked on your continuously rasterized switch so I'm going to delete that mask just select that hit backspace and our plane is visible again and now that we have all of our switches checked on that we need so that this looks pretty, let's start animating things a little bit more complicated than just the plane or the map. And what I'm talking about is our clouds that we brought in. I want to animate these using one object because I want them to look like there's kind of a clump of clouds that comes uh, over the top of our map. But I don't want to animate every single cloud individually because that's a lot of keyframes to set um, and a lot to keep up with. So we are going to learn how to animate using a null object and parenting. So that is a really fun concept to kind of start wrapping your head around and it really allows you to save time once you start setting keyframes and animating things inside of After Effects. <laughs>